I'm sure photographers out there are one of two minds. One, that Peter Parker being a photographer and a superhero is amazing, and we all wish we could get those crazy angles. Or two, that by taking pictures of himself for money, he is a total scam artist that raised the bar on pictures of Spider-Man that no one could hope to accomplish. Spider-Man is not on trial today though, we just want to know what gear he used. In this video, we will explore three incarnations of Peter Parker and learn about the cameras that he used. Sadly, so far we have only seen Tom Holland's Peter Parker taking video with a smartphone, so we won't be including him on the list today. We also won't be looking at anything from the comics or cartoons as they are generally made up uh, like this belt camera or ambiguous rangefinders or even when it's labeled Nikon like this shot here, it's impossible to know for sure which model it is. I promise you though that these real life cameras are nothing short of spectacular. Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to another episode of TOC Extra. Join me as we discover and learn all about Spider-Man's cameras. First up, we have to go all the way back to the late 1970s. The Amazing Spider-Man TV series was first aired in 1977 as a pilot film starring Nicholas Hammond as Peter Parker. In this incarnation, Peter doesn't get bit by the radioactive spider until he's in college, and there doesn't even appear to be an Uncle Ben. During my research for this video, I watched the pilot and I was both entertained and amused. In this scene, he's talking to J. Jonah Jameson about some photos he's trying to sell for the Daily Bugle and gets rejected. Jameson mentions a recent sighting of Spider-Man stopping a thief, which was just Parker on a wall testing his abilities and freaking out a purse snatcher. This prompts Parker to lie, saying he already has a photo of Spider-Man and he quickly throws together a costume, sets up his tripod and self-timer, and takes photos of himself clinging to the wall. The camera that Parker uses is a Nikon F2, specifically the all-black version with a coupled metered prism, self-timer, and motor drive. Now the F2 has its own self-timer, but I imagine that they used an accessory because it looked better for the scene. We can also see that they used an F2 in the promo materials. King of the Highway. Harley Davidson を操る男たち。激しく優雅に。The Nikon F2 was released in 1971, so it was about a six-year-old camera at this point. Assuming Parker bought his a year before, he would have paid about $400 USD with a prism and a 50mm lens, as seen here in this Cambridge Camera Exchange ad in Modern Photography released in February 1976. That's about $1900 in 2021 money. When the F2 was released in 1971, Popular Photography did an extensive review in their December issue addressing many of the rumors, most of which turned out to be false. It isn't fully automatic without the addition of special accessories. It isn't equipped with an electronically governed shutter or built-in timer. It isn't made in Kankakee, Illinois either, says writer Norman Goldberg. The F2 would be metered, but requires a separate photomic finder. Much of the review goes over the upgrades from the original Nikon F. Goldberg explains that for an extra $100 more than the original, you get proof that Nikon has been listening to comments of the original Nikon F owners for the previous 12 years. Nikon treated the Nikon F as a wise man treats a woman. Uh-oh. The good qualities were recognized, appreciated, and enhanced, while the less desirable qualities were modified, but not harshly. In this respect, it would seem that both a good woman and a good camera respond favorably to gentleness coupled with wisdom. Moving on, here's an ad from 1977, which is impressive in itself. From my research on other cameras, usually they drop advertising after about two years, even if the model lives on. Not the F2 though. With the two page ad, Nikon lets you know that the F2 has unquestionably the most accurate viewfinder in 35 millimeter photography. At Nikon, meticulous hand finishing, inspection, refitting, and reinspection assure a centered, incredibly accurate view. Small wonder that Nikon is the choice of today's demanding photographers. 
I gave my first impressions on the Nikon F2 in a previous video, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. The 2002 Spider-Man starring Tobey Maguire is the Spider-Man I love the most. When this movie was released, I was just 21 years old, still young enough to make a huge impression on me and give me a burst of nostalgia whenever I go back and watch it. This Peter Parker is still in high school and during a field trip with his class, he asks Mary Jane if he can take her photo and this is where we get a solid look at Peter's camera. Like in most movies, the brand is taped up or sharpied, but here the model type is not. We can clearly see an F1 and right away we can deduce this is the Canon F1. There are two versions of this camera though, the original F1 released in 1971 and the new version released in 1981. There are many ways to tell them apart, most of them subtle, but the most obvious though is that the new F1 has a hot shoe. Canon was Los Angeles Olympic official clock camera. Professional concept, Canon New F1. While I don't have records for what a new F1 cost in 2002, I do have one for 1998 from an ad in Popular Photography, and it's reasonable to assume that the price wouldn't have changed much in three years. If Peter bought it from Smile Photo and Video in New York, it would have set him back 1600 USD or 2680 in 2021 money. That's a hefty price for a high school student from a lower middle class family. Perhaps it was a hand-me-down. The Canon F1 was a legend of the time and regularly made top recommended cameras in magazines like Modern and Popular Photography years after much more advanced models were released. In this first look by Popular Photography released in September 1981, it is explained that the new F1 is also just called F1 on the cameras, but will be advertised as new F1. These days though, it is known as the F1N. It is a totally revamped model, says reviewer Steve Pollock with a matching line of viewfinders, focusing screens, power film, advanced devices, film backs, and other accessories. Only the lenses, lens accessories, and integrated flash units are interchangeable with other Canon models. Also featured is how each of the three metering modes are prioritized and a look at the viewfinder. This November 1982 ad titled, The New F1 Concept, showcases the wide range of accessories. For the professional level photographer, there can be no one camera that can satisfy every requirement. So when Canon designed our new F1 camera, we created a camera that could be changed to meet every conceivable need, no matter what the photographic challenge. Buying an F1N today will set you back anywhere from three to $600, depending on the condition. In The Amazing Spider-Man, released in 2012, we are introduced to Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. What I find fascinating is that one of the newest incarnations of Spider-Man sports the oldest camera. Not with the earliest release, but the most aged camera. You can see it pretty early on in the movie, and film enthusiasts will pick up right away that it's a rangefinder. Now I must confess that for the longest time, I was convinced that it was a Canonet QL17 G3. However, during my research, I discovered it was in fact a Yashica Electro 35, a camera originally introduced in the mid 1960s. This discovery would require some further narrowing down because according to KenRockwell.com, there were several versions of this camera between 1966 and 1973. A scene in this movie helps reveal exactly which model it is though. Spider-Man is in the sewers pursuing the lizard, hoping for a photo. Attached to the camera is a flash. Only two models of the Electro 35 had a hot shoe, and only one of them came with a chrome finish, the Electro 35 GSN released in 1973. The earlier models only had an accessory shoe, so a flash like this wouldn't work. You can also see the GSN label briefly right here. The Yashica Electro 35 is an aperture priority rangefinder highly popular in its time and known for its low price tag. In 1969, you could pick one up for $115 US or about $850 in 2021 cash. Pretty good considering what they were offering. 
you can see that they kept their $100 price tag in the GSN version, advertised by Kmart here for $99.88 in 1981, which actually works out to $300 today. Even if you've never taken a picture before, the amazing new Yashica Electro 35 will make you an expert instantly claims this ad from the 1960s. Another ad I found put the Electro 35 in the hands of professional photographer Charles Varon. In the ad, it's explained that usually he uses expensive equipment and he was frustrated he couldn't bracket and had to leave it all to the solid state electronic exposure system with the electromagnetic shutter. Of course, his mind was changed after the development. He's not a skeptical anymore, says the ad. Another version of this ad sums it up by saying, you'd take a dozen shots to get this picture. With Yashica's Electro 35, one's enough. In this 10 page full report by Fote Argus, we get a detailed explanation of how the camera works, an exploded view and some pros and cons. A few of the cons include the inability to go over 400 ASA and the need for a mercury battery. Among the pros are reliability, a battery check and simplicity for beginners. And of course, you can still find one today for under $100 on eBay. And there you have it, Spider-Man's cameras. I hope you found this deep dive into photography interesting. What fascinates me is that despite 35 years passing, the camera models stayed within a decade, 1971, 73, and 81. If you like what I do on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. On my Patreon, I offer early access, exclusive videos, and free prints. I also have a monthly newsletter where I do giveaways with each release. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And until next time, stay classic.